and welcome to First Baptist in Collingwood again. Apologies, I broke up the live uh, video because of the heating coming on and uh, it was a bit noisy. Anyway, um, apologies for last week's um, message being late and not completely being out there. Um, I'll try and make sure that doesn't happen again. It was a bit frustrating. The title of the message was Testing Times, and it certainly gave me testing times as I was trying to, to get it out, and I was being told that uh, only part of the uh, message was being heard, and uh, now it's out there, but uh, apologies for that. Anyway, as we continue with the pandemic, we are here in Ontario. We still are encouraged to stay at home, and... Uh, and so that means that we're still not able to meet in person. Uh, but on a Tuesday, I normally bring uh, some words of encouragement, some a meditation on scripture. And today I, I felt led to share from Matthew chapter 5 and uh, beginning to read at verse 43. You've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Words of encouragement for us to be the children of God that we are. To demonstrate that he has given us of his spirit and, and we are able to respond in a different way. You've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That seems to be the way of the world. Love those who love you and hate those who don't. But Jesus says no. He says, I love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Isn't that a challenge to us? Let me read it again. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your Father in heaven. How do we do that? We do it by sharing and caring for those who even come against us and we pray for them. Pray that they might come into a relationship with God through Jesus. Pray that our Actions will be actions that will demonstrate that we are the children of God. That the fruit of the Spirit might be evidenced in our lives as we follow him. We need to pray for those who come against us. We need to pray for those who are trying to silence us. We need to pray for those who have a different point of view. Jesus reminds us that he doesn't decide who the rain, he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? That's the way we need to realize. He says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We're not perfect. We fail. But with his help, we can be more perfect. We can be more like him in the way that we respond. Just use Jesus as an example. As he was giving this teaching, he was putting it into practice because he was showing care for those who were outside. He was demonstrating that he had no... Uh, he recognized there were enemies 
but he shared his love with all. And whoever came to him was never turned away. If people come to us, let's be open to what we do, how we respond. Let's be prepared to share love. In these days of pandemic, pray. We need to pray. Pray that the pandemic will be removed, that we will be kept safe and well, that we might be able to have worship services and meet together in person, that this will not last forever. So we need to be a people who will pray, pray, pray for those who persecute you. Don't hate. Hate what is evil, but love what is good. But love all people. God so loved the world. Not just Canada, United States, Europe. He loves Asia. He loves the world. And then Jesus went on to say some more things that we need to put into practice too. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by, their, by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's a challenge. He wants us to do things not for our other people to praise us, but to please God. That's what he's really saying. We don't please men, we please God. We do it and what we do, don't broadcast it. Don't share with everyone instead. Just do. God sees what you do. God sees what you give. And that giving is just a reminder that we still need to continue to give to the church during these times when the building is closed. The church is still open and we are still continuing on with the mission that we have. So remember, he says, don't be like those who do it so that people can see. When give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. We have a reward when we get to heaven. Those things that we have done that please him. We need to learn to please him in all that we do. I was just reading a psalm earlier that reminded me of the way in which we can know God's help in every situation as he helps us to do the things that he calls us to do. The way in which he answers our prayers. The way that we know that we can go to him at all times. You know, in these days, we need encouragement. So not only does the teaching of Jesus give us that, he He's reminding us that we are the children of God. We are his children, and we should be demonstrating that by the way that we live, by loving, by giving, by sharing. But we do it with his help. Psalm 142. I want you to hear these words. 
I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. Where can I go but to the Lord? That's where we go. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. In the path where I walk, people have hidden a snare for me. Look and see, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. That paints a picture of a person who is desperate, who finds no one around them to help them, but knows there is one who does. There is one who watches over. There is one who guides and helps. And that is God. We can have that relationship with him. We come to him, tell him exactly how we feel. He knows that, but he wants us to share. We need to pour out our hearts to him. We need to turn to him at all times. During this time of pandemic, there are many people who are desperate. But I want to encourage you, if you are desperate, don't despair because God loves you. He cares for you. Cry out to him. You'll be surprised at the help he'll give you. Continue to pray for each other. Set me free from my prison that I may praise your name. Do you feel you're imprisoned? There's a hymn we sing, My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. We can know his presence. We can know the release. We can know the freedom that he will bring to us. Let's ask him by his spirit to lead us and guide us, to enable us to be seen as his children, to know that he loves us, he cares for us, he watches over us. Learn to love, not hate. Learn to persist and persevere through trying times and know that one day we will have a reward. God knows all that you do and we need to ask his forgiveness. We need his mercy. We need to know his love. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to be more like you in every aspect of our lives, to share your love with others, to, to live our lives in a different way from those around us. Help us, Lord. We need your help. Pray for every member of the congregation of First Baptist Collingwood here. You know each and every situation. And so, Lord, we remember each other. We pray for each other. We ask that we might know your power and that, Lord, that we might be able to once again meet in person here at the church. So we just hand all to you. Thank you for all that you've done for us and for the hope that we have in you. Fill us with your spirit. Enable us to be the best. We are not perfect, but you can make us perfect. It's your righteousness, not our own. We thank you and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.